Hi. In the last session, we have learned about the first step that is choosing the training experience in designing the learning system. In today's session, we will learn about the next steps like choosing the target function, choosing a representation for the target function, choosing the approximation algorithm and the final design in detail. The second step that is choosing the target function. In this, we have to determine exactly what type of knowledge will be learned and how this will be used by the program. Let's consider a checkers playing a program that can generate a legal moves from the any board state. The program needs only to learn how to choose the best move from among these legal moves. The target function can be used to predict the results it is the method for solving the problem. This is used to find out the output of the data. We must learn to choose among the legal moves. The most obvious choice for the type of the information to be learned is the program or the function that chooses the best move for any given board state. In the checkers playing program, the function that chooses the best move for any given board state is called the target function. There are two types of the target function discussed here. One is choose to move, then the, the evaluation function. Choose to move is the target function and the notation is choose move B tends to M. This function accepts as input any board from the center of legal board state B and produces has output some move from the set of legal moves M. Choose move drawback is choose move is a choice for the target function in the checkers example. But this function will turn difficult to learn in the indirect training experience available in our system. Has alternative target function is evaluation function that assigns a numerical score to the any given board state. Let the target function V and the notation is V tends to B tends to maps R. V maps any legal board state from the set of B to some real value. If R is higher, better the results. The target function V is used to select the best move from any current board position. Assign higher scores to get the better board state. If the system can successfully learn such a target function V, then it can easily use it to select the best move from any current position. Example, the target value V of B for any arbitrary state B is B has follows. If B is final board state that is 1, then the V of B is equal to 100. If the V is final board state that is lost, then the V of B is equal to minus 100. If the B is final board state that is drawn, then the V of B is equal to 0. If the B is not final state in the game, then the V of B is equal to V of B dash while the B dash is the, the best final board state that can be achieved starting from the B and playing optimally until the end of the game. For playing the checkers game, V of B is not efficiently computable because he does not give the exact real-time solution. Hence, it is called the non-operational definition. Solution in this case is operational description V, which helps the checkers playing program to select the best move within the realistic time bounds. Hence, the learning algorithm uses approximation to the function called the function approximation. Choosing a representation for the target function once we know the training data, the type of the knowledge we want or it should represent to make it easy for us to design a learning system. Let us choose a simple representation for any given board state. Here we are going to do use the linear combinations. Now we will use 
what are the variables used for linear combination? X1 is the number of black pieces on the board. X2 is the number of red pieces on the board. The num X3 is the number of black kings on the board. X4 the number of red kings on the board. X5 the number of black pieces created by the red. X6 the number of red pieces created by the black. Thus. The learning program will represent as a linear function of the form the W0 through the W6 are numerical coefficients or the weights to be chosen by the learning algorithm. The learned values for the weights W1 through the W6 will determine the relative importance of the various board feature in determining the value of the board. The weight W0 will provide an additive in constant to the board value. A choosing a function approximation algorithm involves we have to design an algorithm by giving inputting this data to make our system to learn. If you win the game, we assign the value 100. If you lose the game, we assign the value minus 100. If we draw the game, we assign the value 0. In order to learn the target function f, we require a set of training examples. Each describes a specific board state b and the training value that's v train of b for b. Each training example is an order pair for the form b comma v train comma b. Let us move on to the function approximation procedure. The first is derive training examples from the indirect training experience available to the learner. The second is adjust the weights wi to the best fit this training examples. The best fit weight helps in reducing the error. Let us now about estimating the training values. If the game is finished, it is easy to assign the values. If the game is 1, assign the values 100. If we lose the game, we assign the values minus 100. What we have to choose if it is in between? A simple approach for estimating the training values for the intermediate board state is assign the training value for the V train B. For any intermediate state B to be the V successor of B. V is the, the learner's current approximation to the V. The successor B denotes the next board state following B for which it again the programs to turn move. If you have the, the many option to move or if we know the opponent move, our next move take that has a training value, then the chances of winning the game is more. The rule for estimating the training values. V train of B maps to the V success of B. Our successive move is assigned to the training value. Next, let us know about the adjusting the weights. Once we know the training value x1, x2, x3, we have to assign a weight. We have to adjust the weight that minimizes the error. Specify the learning algorithms for choosing the weights wi to be best fit the set of training examples b comma v train comma b. The a first step is define what is meant by the best fit to the training data. One common approach is to define the best hypothesis or the set of fits which minimizes a squared error e between the training values and the values predicted by the hypothesis. The question arises why we have to take a squaring the error. The squaring the error reduces the error still more. Example, if the error is 0 0.2, 0 0.2 square is 0 0.04, so it reduces still more. Several algorithms are known for finding the weights of linear function that minimize E. One such algorithm is called least mean squares or LMS training rule. For each observed training example, it adjusts the weights a small amount in the direction that reduces the error on this training examples. We are going to reduce the error and update it. Working of weight, 
update rule. When training value and approximation is zero, that is the best fit means no error. When the error weight train of B minus V dash of B is zero, no weights are changed. When weight train of B minus V dash of B is positive, then the V dash of B is too low, then each weight is increased in proportion to the value of its corresponding feature. This will raise the value of V dash of B in reducing the error. If the value of some features xi is zero, then its value is not altered regardless of the error. So that the only weights updated are those whose features actually occur on the training examples both. The first step is choosing the training experience. Second step is choosing the target function. The third step is how to represent the target function. The fourth step is choosing the approximation algorithm. The last step is the, the final design. The final design involves the four steps. They are experimental, generator, generalizer, and the performance system. We'll discuss one by one in detail. The final design of the checkers learning system can be described by four distinct program models that represent the central components in many learning systems. The first module of the performance system is the module that must involve the given performance task by using the learn target functions. It takes as instance of a new game has input and produces a trace of its solution has output. Examples, after learning, if you take a new game and win, then what you have learned is proper. One more example is, after learning car, if you are driving a car in the traffic road, you are successful in driving a car in traffic, then what you learned is proper. The second model is the critic takes has input the history or the trace of the game that produces the output. A set of training examples of the target functions. Uh, suppose we are, you are driving a car, you have many options like driving a car fast or slow or stop when the pedestrian comes in between. So if you generate the few more training data, your chance of winning is more. The third module, the generalizer, takes the, has the input, the training examples, and the produces an output hypothesis that it estimates of the target function. It generalizes from the specific training examples, hypothesizing a general function that covers these examples. Other cases beyond the training examples. Examples, y is equal to mx plus c is a target function. In this, I can take any values to draw a straight line. The fourth module is experiment. The generator takes as an input a current hypothesis and output a new problem for the performance system. To explore, its role is to pick a new practice problems that will maximize the learning rate of the overall system. The sequence of design choices made for the checkers program is summarized for this figure. In the checkers program, the problem performance system takes a board state and generate the solution. Then takes a new state, the critic will test the new states and generate a few more examples for the training. It generalizes the experiment then generate a test. The perspective and issues in the machine learning. The issues in the machine learning, the field the of machine learning and much of in this book is concerned with answering the questions such as the following has follows. What algorithm exists for the learning a general target functions from the specific training examples? In what settings will particular algorithms converge to the desired function given a sufficient training data, which algorithms perform best for which type of problems and the representation. How much training data is sufficient? 
what general bounds can be found to relate the confidence in the learned hypothesis to the amount of the training experience and the character of the low known hypothesis space? When and how can a prior knowledge held by the learner guide the process of generalizing from the examples? Can the prior knowledge be helpful even when it is only approximately correct? What is the best strategy for choosing the useful next training experience? And how does the choice of this strategy alter the complexity of the learning problem? What is the best way to reduce a learning task to one or more function to or the approximation algorithm problems? Put in another way, what specific function should the system attempt to learn? Can this process itself be automated? How can the learner automatically alter its representation to improve its ability to represent and learn the target function? In today's session, we have discussed about the next steps like choosing the target function, choosing of representation for the target function, choosing approximation algorithm, and the final design in detail. In the next sessions, we will learn about the concept learning that is how to use the data to teach a machine to solve the binary class specification problem. Thank you. Happy learning.